Hello and welcome to the Mr. Brown podcast, where I reflect on my journey as an early career teacher with a special focus on mental health. I am your host, James Brown. Salutations. I hope this finds you well. I've been a bit poorly for the past week or so. So if I sound a little bit congested, it's because I am. But I think I'm through the worst of it now. It's unusual for me, in fact, to get ill during term. Normally my body seems to save up all the illness for the holidays. But on this occasion, we've had a change of pace and I've been poorly during the term. I haven't had to stay home from school, but school's been a bit miserable. I've limped through. I've been in limp mode for about a week now. But like I said, I think I'm through the worst of it. The main thing I'd like to talk about today is a lesson I taught or tried to teach a couple of weeks ago. And it was, I think, my most calamitous lesson. So let me tell you what happened. It was with one of my year seven classes. I like to have my students line up before they enter the room. And I do have a fairly tightly controlled entry routine, or at least I like to have a fairly tightly controlled entry routine. And yet before we even entered the classroom, I was getting into arguments with students in the queue who weren't perhaps standing where I wanted them to stand and who perhaps were being just a little bit belligerent, so I was already getting in arguments in the queue before we'd even entered the room, which was a very negative start. I think I'd already handed out some consequences before we'd even entered the room. And then as we finally entered the room, well, it took took us a long time to enter the room. I did dig my heels in here. I was adamant that we weren't going to enter the room until we had order in the line, Uh, and it took me a while to get it. Once we finally entered the room, things got worse. And I don't think I've ever felt this way as a teacher in a classroom. I felt inconsequential. So I had students who were having conversations across the classroom and generally being disruptive. And I was trying to control them. I was trying to use the school's consequence system to control them so that we could do some learning. And I was being completely ignored. Like I said, I felt inconsequential, like I wasn't even in the room. The consequences were falling on deaf ears. Some students barely batted an eyelid. And I was just incredulous at the front. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe what was happening. Now, I should stress, it wasn't the whole class, but it was a significant minority. And there are some students in that class who, once they misbehave, several others will follow suit. My old mentor said that um, a lot of most students are sheep. They'll follow whoever is the most dominant personality in the room. And on that occasion, it wasn't me. So, yes, I felt inconsequential. And... I did manage to regain control of the class, but it came at considerable cost. I think I had to eject three students from the lesson. And then there were two other students who were on the verge of being asked to leave as well when they were actually pulled out by another teacher. I'm not sure why. So I did manage to regain control of the class and we did do some learning. But it took probably maybe 20 minutes for all this to unfold. And it was only by getting rid of five students. And that, as a teacher, made me feel rather ashamed because that's not a sustainable approach to classroom management. You can't just be kicking out one quarter of your class. God, you wouldn't know I was a maths teacher, would you? One sixth of your class in order to teach. 
those students are going to miss out. And that's not what my school is about. In fact, it's some of those students who I'd say need education the most. We can't just be kicking them out. Um, so I felt rather ashamed and it was very stressful. And I also had a student with me from the University of Warwick, an undergraduate student who is on a short placement. And I think it was her first day in the school and she was witness to all this. And I feel very sorry for her, although she she has been back since. So it didn't it didn't permanently put her off. But yes, I was it was a, a calamity of a lesson. And I've done a lot of thinking about it since. And the first thing. I think that's worth mentioning is at the time I thought it was just my worst ever lesson, but I don't think that's true. I think there were lessons during my training year, which were worse. Some quite famous examples, actually, which I think I've discussed on the podcast before, or at least on the predecessor to this podcast. So you could go check out the My PGCE podcast if you wanted to hear about some of those lessons. So I think I have taught worse lessons. I should say, sorry, I think I have had lessons where behaviour was worse. But this time it hurt more. And I think that's because I now, as a teacher, have a bigger ego. I'm a couple of years into teaching and... I just thought this sort of thing shouldn't be happening to me. To a trainee, maybe. I mean, it did happen to me as a trainee, but that's to be expected. But I'm a teacher with two years experience in an inner city comprehensive school. I should be able to do better than this. And yet look at this chaos before me. This really hurts. This has hurt my ego. It was a reality check, perhaps. And so it felt bad. But like I said, I don't think it was the worst behavior I've encountered. But it just, I think of all the behavior I've encountered, it made me feel the worst. Because like I said, I've got this inflated ego and I felt completely inconsequential in the classroom. So that wasn't nice. Now, I think it's also worth trying to diagnose what went wrong. What were the conditions? that led up to this calamitous lesson. And when you start looking at the context, it kind of, it does make sense, I think. So first, this is a year seven class, a lower attaining year seven class, which has been hit really, really hard with cover this year. Their teacher left at Christmas, their main teacher left at Christmas. And the teacher who was due to replace him has been ill since Christmas. And so since Christmas, they've had a string of different supply and cover teachers. They're completely out of routine. And I think that this is a class which really needs routine and in fact would thrive on routine. And routine is something that really matters to me. I'm very much routine driven. But they're completely out of routine. As far as behaviour expectations are concerned, they may not even be aware of those expectations. And so it's a hard class to walk into. It's a hard class to walk into. And this was the class that, because their teacher has been ill, I have been given. Or I was given anyway. I was teaching them three lessons a week. Um, It's now gone back down to one because their teacher has... Uh, returned. So it was a hard class to walk into. It was kind of a bit chaotic from the start and many of them are relationships driven and I was walking in fresh. But we did have a, a bit of a honeymoon period to begin with where things were going quite well for a week or 10 days or so. I was trying to re-establish routines and um, trying to build some relationships and at the very start, this I still don't know whether this was an error, but when I first went into that class, more than a month ago now, they were sat where they wanted and I allowed them to sit where they wanted. I said to them, you can sit wherever you like in my lessons as long as you work, which they liked. They could sit with people they wanted to. And for a few lessons, they worked quite well. 
and I thought this was a good way for me to show that I trusted them, and I was heaping lots of praise upon them. But then the chatter, after a while, became a little too much, and my expectations, because we'd had some progress, um, were getting higher. I wanted better, I wanted even better behaviour from this class, and I think my expectations rose too quickly, too soon. So they were chatting in these groups. I was no longer happy for them to be chatting in these groups, so I did change the seating plan, and it was met with considerable resistance. I separated several groups of friends, and sadly it didn't stop them having their conversations. They still had their conversations, but now they were doing it across the classroom rather than right next to one another, one another. which meant that I had to start using the consequence system more severely. There had been several occasions running up to this calamitous lesson where I'd had to kick the odd student out. And so I felt that there was also a bit of resentment building between me and certain key students in that group. So that was negative. And so those were the conditions that led up to to this um to this calamitous lesson. Resentment had started to build between me and certain students. It was also a period five. And I think I was grumpy, might even have been ill. And so it was a bit of a recipe for disaster. So with hindsight, I think that lesson was always going to be difficult. And I made it more difficult than it needed to be. I think I went in with a negative attitude. That resentment was starting to get the better of my mindset. Went in with a slightly negative attitude. And this is a class that thrives on positivity. And if you're negative towards them, they will up the ante in terms of negativity. And that's exactly what happened. It escalated to the point of calamity, like I said where I had to kick several students out. Okay, so, well, what happened next? Well, I had them again a couple of days later, and I knew that something had to change. First, I revised my expectations. I lowered them a little bit. And I don't think this is a bad thing. Some teachers will disagree with me on this one. But if behaviour is a curriculum which I think it is. I think that students, young people, children need to be taught how to behave properly. They're not just going to do it automatically. So if behaviour is a curriculum, then I think I expected too much too soon of this class, given the fact that they had been hit so hard with cover all year and were completely out of routine. I expected too much too soon. It would be like asking students to do fraction division before they even knew what a fraction was i think that would be the that would be the equivalent so i asked too much too soon so i lowered my expectations a little and i made a point of speaking to certain key students before the next lesson i had conversations with four students and i told them sincerely that I loved having them in my class. They were a valued part of the class and I loved their contributions, which is true. Despite how tricky some of them can be, it is true. So I told them this. I also told them that each and every lesson is a fresh start for me and for them. That was my attempt to try to dispel some of the resentment that I could feel had been building. So I told them that each and every lesson was a fresh start and that I was really looking forward to teaching them that afternoon. So I spoke to most of these students, I think at break or lunchtime. So I tried to shift the tone to a more positive one. In my head as well, I also tried to, well, I tried to do two things because I came away from that calamitous lesson a little bit shook. I tried to do two things. I tried first to focus on the positives because most of the behaviour, the poor behaviour I had encountered on that day came from no more than five or six students. But it's a class of 30 and so most of the students in that class 
are very well behaved, really want to learn, and and it's wonderful to have a class with lots of students who are well behaved and who want to learn. So I tried to focus on that instead, and I also tried to see it as a challenge. So one of the reasons that I got into teaching was because I knew it would be a challenge, and that's something I'd been lacking in my life up until that point, and I'd felt pretty purposeless and quite miserable. So I knew that teaching was going to be a challenge. I wanted a challenge, and look, here was a challenge. This class was presenting a challenge. Perhaps I'd gotten a little bit too comfortable up until that point. Like I said, my ego had grown a little bit too big. I'd had this reality check, but that's a good thing because it gives me an opportunity to try and address the challenge and to grow as a teacher and a person. So that's how I try to reframe it in my own mind so that I enter the classroom slightly more positively. And the next lesson was much better. So I tried to address my own negative mindset. I'd had those conversations before the lesson with students. And in the lesson, I tried to be much more positive. There were certain low level behavioral issues that I would address, but I addressed differently. I wouldn't immediately throw consequences at the students in an almost malicious way. Instead, I tried to deal with it more positively. And I also had to be very proactive and energetic. I had to keep doing laps of the classroom to ensure that students were staying on task. I had to have lots of little one-to-one conversations throughout the lesson. I had to use lots of verbal praise, even for the smallest steps in the right direction. And on the whole, it was exhausting. I must, I'd, I'd have done a lot of steps in that lesson. But on the whole, it was a much more positive experience. And we got lots of learning done. And I think I managed to mend some of the relationships that had started to disintegrate, which resulted in a much better lesson. I didn't have any serious behavioural issues. I don't think I used the consequence system once. And... I think students appreciated it. And indeed, I've taught them several times since, and we haven't had another calamitous lesson. I thank my lucky stars. So I've had some progress with this group. And so I wanted to ask you, the listeners, many of whom I know are teachers, whether you've ever had such an experience, how it made you feel, and what you did to try to address the problem. I'm especially interested in, like I said, one of the things that made that subsequent lesson a bit better was that I revised my standards downwards a little bit. Thinking of behaviour as a curriculum, I think I'd asked too much of them too soon. And so in the subsequent lesson, I asked a little less of them. I let certain minor behavioural issues slide without levying consequences in order to try to maintain a more positive atmosphere. And I should also stress that that's not where my behavioural standards will stay. I will inch them upwards, but I will only inch them upwards. I think one of the problems I'd had before was that I had jumped upwards too quickly. So what do you think of this, this approach? I know some teachers seem to be unwavering in their adherence to behavioural standards. And so if you're one of those teachers and you do come across a trickier class, how do you not end up with a negative atmosphere where students are kind of regularly falling short of your standards and you're having to regularly dish out consequences and attentions and phone calls home? How do you stop that resulting in a negative atmosphere? I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. And that's it, I think, for today. That was the main thing I wanted to discuss. It was a hard lesson, but I'm in it for hard lessons. When you make progress with a class like this one, it means so much. And I hope that the progress continues, but I will keep you posted. And I'd like to also stress at the end that despite the poor behaviour in that calamitous lesson, I do value each and every one of those students. They are all 
wonderful individuals. And under the right conditions, they work really well and they make me very proud. And I do indeed love being their teacher. So before I say goodbye, my usual Patreon plea. This episode took a couple of hours to produce and I aim to produce a couple of episodes a month. So if you think that that work is worth at least the price of a coffee, so two to three pounds once a month, then please consider signing up on Patreon and helping me cover the cost of producing the podcast. It doesn't cost a lot, but any contribution would be greatly appreciated. And if you sign up on Patreon, you will get exclusive early access to videos of my recording sessions. So if that sounds appealing, then please sign up. Thank you, and we will talk again in a few weeks' time. If you enjoyed this episode, please spread the word in person and on social media. You can follow me on Twitter at MrBrownPod or email MrBrownPod at gmail.com. Please subscribe, rate and review in your directory of choice. Please also consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Mr. Brown Pod and helping me cover the cost of producing the podcast. Thank you and talk again soon.